Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Break, break down. All right, y'all. Y'all know what it means when y'all hear the Mariah Carey and Bone Thugs in Harmony. It's time for another Takashi 6 9 breakdown, okay? So I think we're like on chapter 7. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is chapter 7. I've been keeping up. We've also been posting stuff on Instagram. Um, certain things that I just really didn't need to make a video about. But this, I felt the need to create a video, okay? So if you guys do not know... If you guys have not heard, the Godfather, okay, the man <laughs> with the master plan, uh, Mel Murder, mm. he recently wrote The Judge. Mel Murder wants to go home, okay? He does not want to be bothered with prison anymore. He sees that Takashi 6 9 done got a, you know, a sweet deal snitching. A lot of folks are also giving Mel Murder the side eye as well because, you notice on all the leaked phone conversations, Mel Murder is there. Well, as of two days ago, he recently wrote the judge who presided over the case and the godfather of Train 9 wants out. Shit done got too real for him, okay? So this whole situation is just really crazy. So I want to go ahead and break everything down to you guys. So um, in April of 2009, Mel Murder pled guilty to one count of racketeering conspiracy and one count of participating in a narcotics distribution conspiracy for selling a kilo of fentanyl, okay? He is one of a dozen men accused of sparking a wave of violence around New York City in a RICO case against Takashi 6 9 and the Nine Trey Gangster Bloods. 6 9 took the stand during an eight day trial to testify against his former associates, which resulted in the convictions of fellow Nine Trey gang members, all Jeremiah Nuke Mack and Anthony Harv Ellison. Mack is awaiting sentencing for dealing drugs, while Ellison will be sent to prison for kidnapping 6 9 during an initial dispute over the rapper's career. Mel Murder's lawyer, Scott Lemon, asked the presiding judge, Paul Engelmeyer, to stay within the sentencing guidelines and gave his client 78 months in prison since his infraction was nonviolent. In a lengthy letter to the court, Mel Murder explained how he was released from prison in 2005 and was attempting to turn his life around. In 2006, he re-entered a recording contract with Diplomat, um, which is ran by Jim Jones, and he ended up falling back into his old ways, okay? On top of that, he's also a father of two children. He has not been sentenced yet, because remember, I've been searching to see if he had been sentenced. He's just been sitting, I guess, in Rikers or some jail, um, but he's going to be sentenced October 17th, which isn't just seven days. Today's the 10th, so, you know, he's on pins and needles right now because he's seeing everybody's getting double digits, you know? Shoddy got 15 years. The other guy, I think, got like 10. And meanwhile, Takashi 69, he's about to get out. So he sent this letter. Let me go ahead and read the letter to you guys. So the letter says, I hope this letter reaches you and you're in good health and spirits. As for me, I'm sitting at the MDC thinking about a lot of poor choices I made in life. When I think back, a lot of my issues started when I was a young kid just trying to belong. Coming up as a kid, I did not really have a positive role model in my life. I found myself a very angry teenager because of the things I experienced and the things I saw at home behind closed doors. I took to the streets heavy at the age of 14. A lot of my friends suffered the same way I did or worse, so we became each other's comfort blankets. The older guys in my neighborhood that embraced us were thugs off the corner and they were involved in illegal activities like drugs and violence, but at least they seemed to care about our well-being, or so we thought at the time. In reality, I can see now that they were really just molding us to become young criminals because they knew we really had nobody and we were gullible young kids looking to fit in and find father figures we look to these guys for the love that we're missing and that is when the united blood nation came into my life at 15 years of age between my anger and loyalty to the game i made a lot of bad decisions trying not to let the gang down by the time i was 18 going on 19 years old my childhood sweetheart don gillespie gave birth to my beautiful daughter and that's when i realized i wanted more for myself my child and for my heart don but the streets still had a hold on me. I was at war in my own head and I wanted to fall back from the gang life and do the right thing by my family. But I felt like I was somehow being wrong 
But I felt like I was somehow being wrong to my gang family because at this point, I really believed that they had been there for me when I had no one. What I did was try to distance myself as much as possible. I started working in the music industry. I got signed to Diplomat Records. And when I was 24 years old, things were looking up for me and I found myself staying away from negativity. But I was becoming very popular and with that life came a lot of envy, money, and women. This all caused me to lose Don because of my own cheating and inability to be home because of the demands of touring and life in the industry. I found myself becoming depressed and falling back into my old ways and going back to the streets because I was not happy. I had lost my earlier life even though I know I had money and fame. I felt like something was missing. A lot of dormant anger from my childhood came back to the surface. When I tried to return to the game, they were mostly only concerned with my presence and reputation, what I could do for them financially. It was at that point that I realized their love was never genuine. They gave me a position of authority because of who I was and my age. During that time in my mind, I decided that I was done with the streets, but I still try to keep ties with some of the guys I knew from the game. I know that was where I went wrong. My real family I now realized was my mother, Don, my aunts, my brother. I got back with Don and she gave me a baby boy named my pride and joy. I realize I have to break this cycle because I don't want my son or daughter going through what I did. I want the best for them. I know I should have woken up and realized this earlier, especially when I was shot five times and my loved ones almost lost me. Now I find myself caught up in this case. This is the first time I'm in real serious trouble, but I can promise you that this will be my last. I am not a part of the violence in my case, and this federal arrest has been a real wake-up call for me. I sincerely apologize for all my actions and take full responsibility. I ask for leniency and a second chance to return to my children as soon as possible. I want to return to my family and right all my wrongs so I can be there for them. They need me and I definitely need them. It is a must that I break the cycle. It is killing me that I'm not there for my children and my loved ones. I'm completely done with the streets. I plan to change my environment as well as the company that I keep. To me right now, the most important company to keep is that of my family and my children. Please allow me to return to them as soon as possible. I don't need a whole lot of time to fix myself. I need counseling and for you to believe in me and see that I'm not the monster they paint me to be. Please understand that I am human and I ask you for a second chance. Respectfully submitted, Jamel Jones. All right, so you guys just heard me read that long letter slash dissertation. And I will say this, you know, while, you know, I feel bad in a way because this is a, a grown man. I'm not going to say young man. He's grown. Um, who, you know, he lived a, a horrible childhood and, you know, he got swept in the streets. And if you're from the hood and you're from the projects, this is so many people's stories. His story is not different from other people whose parents were on drugs or whose parents just didn't care. And the only people that they really had that showed them any type of attention, any type of love were the OGs, were the older guys. But as you start to grow, you realize that a lot of these so-called OGs, you know, they weren't there because they really cared about you or they wanted to be a father figure. They were there to use you for their criminal activities because especially back when we were growing up in the 90s, back then things were a lot lenient for kids. So if a kid got caught, you know, with drugs or a gun, you really didn't get any charges. You might go to juvie for like a month or two, then you'd be back on the streets. That's when they started making stuff a lot harsher. But back then it wasn't as harsh. So a lot of the OGs would use kids to do their dirt, but they would try to act like they really cared about you and act like they, you know, like you were like a child to them. But the whole time they were just manipulating young minds and young children, right? So I definitely get that part of it. But one thing I will say is that, you know, a lot of guys turn into professors once they're caught. They want to write dissertation. They want to write stuff to the judge. You know, people get locked up every day, B. And they just do their time. Because the thing that people need to realize is that when you're doing criminal things, um, there's always a chance that you can get caught. So you don't want to engage in criminal activity if you're not about that life, if you're not willing to go sit down for five to 10 years, if you're not willing to put that time into the system, then you shouldn't be out there committing crimes. Okay. I mean, let's, I, I just got to be honest about it. You know, at the end of the day, I feel like Mel murder should have learned his lesson the first time he already stated in here that he went to prison and he was released in 2005. 
He came out. He was able to get signed to diplomats. You know, a lot of people come out from prison. They're not even able to find a job. So he really got his second chance and a blessing. He was able to tour the world, hang with the diplomats and do all this stuff only for him to get caught up in that lifestyle, to cheat and, you know, to to just get caught up in the whole glitz and glamour of the fake ass industry. And then he lost it all. And then he ended up back turning to the streets. So my thing is, you know, you already given a blessing and a second chance. I don't know if this judge is going to be willing to give you a third chance because that really would technically be a third chance, you know? So the whole situation is just really crazy. You know, at the end of the day, all these people did dirt. All these people were criminals, you know? And it's funny that now that the sentences are being handed out, everybody wants to play victim. Yes, Takashi 6 9 is a snitch flat out, but he's not snitching on innocent people either. A uh, matter of fact, just a few days ago, it came out that they had Shadi on audio in the courtroom where he was bragging to 6 9 that he had shot five people. So again, you know, this is really serious. And, you know, Casanova, when that whole shootout happened between 6 9 and Casanova, Casanova could have been killed. So this was like real stuff that was going on. And, you know, yes, hindsight is twenty twenty, but there still has to be accountability for your actions. And Casanova was speaking about this today because they were asking Casanova about how he felt about the whole 6 9 situation and how he felt about the guys who were looking at double digits. And basically Casanova is saying that at the end of the day, all these folks ran to support 6 9 and support him, but he saw through the foolishness and he doesn't feel bad for any of these guys because, one, they tried to take him out, but Two, they put themselves in that situation. So I want you guys to go ahead and listen to what Casanova had to say. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Truthfully, that was like the number one artist in the world. Truthfully, like, I never saw... In the course of 12 months, In the course of 12 months, I never saw 10 minutes, a million views. And I feel like even the people that's calling him, whatever they call him, yo, yo, it's that and that Shut the fuck up, because y'all was sucking his dick. So, me, I ain't got nothing bad to say about him. Y'all deal with that. Them niggas that, all them niggas that's with him, I don't feel sorry for them at all. You know what I'm saying? They went they went, they went, went the wrong route from the, to begin with. Who even care about them people that he took off the street? Because nobody cared about them before they met him. They was bums. So, who gives a fuck? At the end of the day... You know what I'm saying? Nobody not jumping out the window to fucking do nothing. You the craziest fuck. All right, so you guys just heard that interview um, with Casanova and what he had to say. And I definitely agree with him. Like I said, a lot of these guys put themselves in this situation. And while this letter that Jamal Jones sent um, to the judge is touching and he went through a lot of stuff, let's not also romanticize these guys, okay? Because according to the inner city press, during the court case, they played a recording in court, okay, by Jose Rivera, the driver, where Shadi says he shot five people in one night for male murder. He says he earned his stripes. So these guys were putting in work, not just for themselves, but for the godfather of Treyway. So for him to be writing a letter wanting, you know, leniency is just ridiculous. When five people can get shot in one night, that's insane. My sympathy goes out to those five people who were shot. Okay, if they were civilians who were hit by accident, my heart goes out to them. If they were involved in the in the whole gang lifestyle, then it is what a damn is, okay? But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just kind of tired of this narrative of this, you know, oh, woe is me, these poor guys. They made their mistakes. They made their bed. Now they're going to have to lie in it. And honestly, 
Um, they had been watched long before Takashi came. Takashi was just the icing on the cake that they needed. So these guys messed up by sitting here fighting amongst each other and falling off with each other to see who could get next to 6 9 And at the end of the day, unbeknownst to 6 9 he was able to get all these people caught up charge and they're all looking at double number sentences okay so the whole situation is just really sad but what's even more crazy is that 6 9 is going back to the studio once he's released now they're saying that he should be out by december okay they already pushed it they already pushed the date up so he can get out sooner he wasn't supposed to be out until january 2020 but now they're trying to do it for december so he can be home for christmas 6 9 sentencing date has been moved up from january 24th to december 18th judge engelmeyer just issued an order that 6 9 will be in court and will be sentenced at 10 a.m on wednesday december 18th Look for 6 9 to get out on that day. The reason why? In this case, the government and 6 9s attorneys worked to get the judge to move the sentencing date up. Only by a few weeks. You would never work to move to get the sentencing date up only by a few weeks unless you were going to recommend that he get time served and that he get out. In this case, look for the government to recommend that, and then look for the judge to go along with that recommendation. So far, the judge has sentenced several defendants in this case, and the way the judge has been giving out sentences is by splitting the difference, giving a sentence in the middle of the recommendation by the government and the recommendation by the defense attorneys. In this case, the recommendation by the government and the recommendation by the defense attorneys will likely be the same, which is time served, and that's likely what the judge will give 6-9 December 18th. But what's even crazier is this. It's just been announced as of three hours ago that Takashi 6 9 just signed a $10 million record deal in prison. So this young man's going to be able to literally come out of prison, even though he did all that dirt with these guys, was very much, you know, involved, was green lighting for other people to get shot and attacked like Casanova. But at the end of it, he's being rewarded with a record deal, a $10 million record deal. The TMZ is reporting this, so I'm sure that it's real. But he just signed a record deal in prison for $10 million. Meanwhile, these black men are getting sentenced to double digits. You have the godfather, Treyway, basically begging the judge to, you know, really uh, give him some leniency come October 17th. And this dude who basically snitched on everyone, who was just as involved as everybody else, he was not innocent in any of this, is now going to be seen as some type of hip hop, you know, icon and getting signed a $10 million deal. I mean, it's just the whole situation to me is just crazy. And the fact that the industry, the fact that these record labels are co-signing this fuckery is bullshit. That's how you know they want to sell people of color nothing but just, just negativity, poison, and death. Because nothing about his lifestyle, nothing about this case, nothing about what's been going on these past few months shows that he should be rewarded for anything. He needs to go into witness protection and he needs to go sit his ass down. Why do we reward bad behavior in society? This dude was out here gang banging, perpetuating all types of bullshit to the youth, but now he's being rewarded. But the black guys who were doing the same thing as him are being sentenced to double digits. If you guys don't see the bullshit and the hypocrisy behind that, I don't know what to tell y'all, but this entire situation is crazy. So anyways, y'all, that is my part seven of this whole Takashi 6 9 update. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation with Mel Murder, a.k.a. the godfather of Treyway, basically coming out and wanting leniency from the judge. And then how do you guys feel about Shadi admitting to shooting five people in one night? And then the news that leaked today about 6 9 signing a $10 million record deal. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Don't forget to thumbs up the video, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to share. Most importantly, don't forget to hit the notification bell so that way you can be a part of the notification squad. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces.